Okay, alert rules. This is a big subject. Alerting in general is a big subject, so I'm probably going to split this up into a couple different videos, but we'll start off with alert rules here. So, as we've been going along, we've been adding all these devices and monitoring all these cool stats, port, utilization, processor, health sensors, uh, all sorts of stuff in here we're monitoring, disk I.O. Uh, so, what good is this stuff um, if we don't know if it changes and alerts on us? You know, we're not in here watching it 24-7. I mean, maybe I am, but I know you guys probably aren't. So we need some way of alerting uh, this stuff. Um, we, need to, we need to find a way to alert us. And uh, alert rules are basically how you do that. Um, I mentioned in my previous video that uh, alert rules were a lot like device groups. Uh, and that you basically are taking the entire list of devices in Librium MS and you're filtering them down to just a select few uh, and maybe even just a few uh, sensors or interfaces or ports on that device uh, so you might be just creating a rule just for that um, so once you have the device or devices or interfaces or sensors you want to alert on that's where alert templates and transports come in because that's what's going to actually uh, send out the alert and notify you uh, via uh, many different means. Uh, they have a bunch of different ways you can be alerted. Uh, email is one of them and that's the one I use but uh, there's tons and tons of them on there. They're all on the Librium MS website here but uh, you can send out an alert to you. Um, so when you're first starting off with Librium MS alerting you really don't really care about those two because unless you get your alert rule down and working perfectly uh, you're just going to mess mess up everybody by alerting them uh, about fake stuff, uh, either false positives or you're alerting too much or you're not alerting enough or it's missing on certain conditions. Um, so you kind of got to play around with them. So the good news is, is that the web GUI really doesn't follow that template transport thing. That's kind of all on its own. So when you create an alert rule, it will, and if it matches a device, it will uh, automatically start alerting in the web GUI here. And in order to see alerts, you just go to alert and notifications. So when starting out, it's really good just to start playing with these alert rules here. And in order to create them, you can go to alert and alert rules. Now I'm going to create a new alert rule right here. And it's going to be a pretty uh, not good one. So I'm going to just create a alert rule that is based on the OS. And as long as it matches PFSense, it's going to alert. Now, this is exactly what we did with device groups. We basically were taking the entire list of devices and filtering them on a certain condition. Uh, so now any devices I have in my system, it will alert uh, on this rule. And you can go to here, alert and notifications. Now you don't see it here because the polar script hasn't ran on that device yet. Uh, I'm set up for five minute polling, so it's good to know that when a device goes down, it's not going to alert until that polar script runs at the five minute interval. Uh, so you'll have to wait for the five minutes when you're messing with alert rules here, or you just go into the device and run the polar script manually. Um, there's also another uh, option in here, and I probably should show you real quick. When you went to this capture here, uh, there was two more tabs in here, SNMP and alerts. Uh, so I'll talk about alerts right now. Um, you can always run this polar script, and that will kind of test the alerts too. That will actually fire the alert. But if you just want to see if it will match on the alert, uh, you can just hit this run here, and it will list all the different rules here, and it will tell you if it matched that rule, if it's going to hit it or not. Uh, it will go through each one. You'll see all your rules you create in here, and it'll go through every one until if it matched or not. So this is also a good way of just seeing, yes, it is hitting that rule. It will match that rule when the uh, when the polar script runs, and it tries to see if it needs to send out an alert for this. Uh, it's going to check this, and yes, it's going to match, so it'll send out an alert. So now if we go to alert and notifications, well, we should see it in there. I don't believe that when you when you hit that... Um, you hit that uh, capture there for alerts. I don't believe that's actually going to uh, alert in the web GUI. I think it was just a coincidence that the Polar script ran. Um, so I'm, I, it might. I, I don't know for sure, but I think this is just doing like a database lookup just to see if it does match or not. It's not really doing anything in the back end. Uh, so just run the Polar script. That will definitely, definitely test your uh, alerting capabilities. And that's also good if you're testing uh, the alert transports and templates too. Uh, and you just want to see if it it's alerting right now. And you just want to see if it will actually send it out. 
So if we go back to notifications here, we see that we got one alert here and it was our PF Sense device. Um, now that's kind of pointless because that device is actually up. Uh, that's not an alert. There's no real reason we should ever alert on that. Now, this is a good example to show you that sometimes you can actually get up devices or devices that you don't expect to be in your alerts. Um, that's why it's uh, very important to kind of fine tune them and play with them and make sure that other stuff's not getting in there. So now let's just create a, a better alert. Um, down devices. So devices, status, this is zero. I think this is down. And I'm going to change this wording to critical. Um, this is basically just a little uh, severity thing. There's a severity column here, uh, and you can set it to warning or critical. And warning makes the uh, row yellow, and critical will make it red. So, you know, for down devices, probably be red. Okay, so this 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 uh, this cleared. This hasn't cleared yet because it hasn't polled. So, you know, I deleted that rule now, but, you know, Librium MS is not smart enough to get rid of this because it doesn't know if it's still matching it or not. You know, it doesn't really know how much I edited it. Uh, it knows I edited it, but it doesn't know if it matched it or not. So basically it just has to run that polar script again to see if it's going to match this rule, and then it'll take it out. Uh, and it should also add that other device in there. Uh, so it took it out. Oh, what do we got? Another device? Yep, we got my down device now. So I just kept on hitting notifications, and that'll refresh the screen. You probably do F5 too, but... Uh, I think the screen actually might update automatically, too. Uh, so I'll have to check on that. But this is my down device. If you look at all my down devices here, I have one device down. So when we alerted on device status equals zero here, uh, that's, that's all well and fine and all. But there's sometimes there's other... Um, things you need to check for uh, to really know if it's down or not. And actually in the devices you can set a little tag in here. Um, set a tag. This is a ignore alert tag. You're basically just setting a, a value in the database from like 1 to 0 or 0 to 1. Um, so when you turn that on, you're basically saying, I don't want to, I don't want to alert. Hey, you know, this is a disable alert in here. They just recently changed these around. I know I just tested this. And if you turn this off, it's going to turn off all polling. And if all polling turns off, then you're not going to be able to ping it. Or I mean, you're not going to be able to alert on it because it doesn't run the polar script. So I know that's going to turn off everything. So that just basically just keeps it in the database, but doesn't do anything with it. And disable alerting, it looks like when I click this, it did, it did obey it and it didn't alert on my rule here. Um, but the reason I said there was that ignore alert tag because if you go in here uh, you can actually import uh, they actually have a bunch of alert rules for you already done here uh, there's a couple of different ones just but collection is what you want uh, if you took on collection there there's a bunch of already pre-made device rules here and you can see the very first one here is devices up and down and that's pretty much what we created with that devices status equals zero um, but basically what they did is they uh, made a macro and that macro is basically just a bunch of commands like this uh, they just assigned it a name called like device down. It's not these commands, but you know, it's a couple commands. We can actually see what those uh, commands are if I didn't. Uh, well, I just, uh, I don't know. What, I, I bet they organized it by, uh, yeah, they organized it by, uh, by popularity. You know, I don't know what. Uh, it's probably also my battery is, uh, my keyboard battery's like been flashing for the last two weeks. Probably should replace that. That's might be not be helping me with my typing. Uh, so see this device is down here. We're gonna set that to yes, but we're gonna look at this SQL real quick. Uh, device is down equals yes. So out of all of my devices, if the device is down, yes, alert on it. Uh, so here is the actual SQL is running. You can see that devices dot status equals zero was exactly what we did, but they also had to match on these two other conditions: uh, devices dot disabled equals zero and devices dot ignore equals zero. And one of those is that alert tag we uh, clicked on in the device there. So now that we have that macros device down, um, you can see that we actually are alerting on the same device two different times. So, you know, a device can be part of multiple alerts because um, more, more, more than often you'll have um, 
different ports on device, especially like switches, uh, you might want to alert for some ports a different way and another ports a different way. So you might create different alerts for these different ports um, uh, in all sorts of different ways. But just know that you're not binding a device to like an alert at any means. Uh, they're always, it's going to try and match every single alert rule you have. So when I was actually kind of testing this out before I made this video, I was playing around here and I saw there was actually a really cool um, uh, thing you could do here. So they, you can alert on anything in the database. So every device has a notes field which you can put any text you want. Um, I don't think there's really any limit to it. I mean, there, there might be, but I don't know what it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to do alert devices.notes. Out of all my devices, if any of the devices uh, notes begins with this dash dash alert, uh, we're going to alert on that. Uh, so that. And I probably have a device here because I was testing this earlier. Uh, if you click on any device, you'll have a notes field here. And I did. I put this in here. Um, so... Basically, these are all blank by default, um, but I did type this in here. If I hit save and I go over here, yeah, see, I have a manual alert now. I actually put it in this device too, so let's go in this device. Yep, see, that device has it in there now too. So if I delete it out of this one, save, eventually the next time it pulls, it should uh, clear out of there. But you can see I can have different, uh, you know, every single row here is a device that has gone down, you know, or alerted, rather. That's pretty cool that you can make kind of a manual alert there. So one of the other uh, concepts is that in alert rules is that once you actually make the match and you filter down like what device you're going to alert on you need to send out a notification and pretty much uh, after this is all the notification part here um, now you kind of got to remember that the web GUI is separate than the uh, the notification part of it uh, the web GUIs are kind of all by itself so these these settings here don't take effect in the web GUI they only take effect when you're going to send off the alert outside of Libri and MS with the transport so what happens is that when the Polar script runs, it's going to see if it matches this alert. And if it does, it's going to start counting down to this timer here. Uh, this is set to one minute right now, but let's just uh, let's just keep it at one minute. So uh, Polar script ran. It matched this alert. So it's counting down from 60 seconds, 59 seconds, whatever. It's going to get down to zero, and it's going to fire off the alert. So this is just a delay for when it matches. Don't send it right away. Don't send it immediately. Send it a little bit later. Uh, and the, and the reason you might want to do that is because, you know, poor up down, maybe you have like, a, it's connected to a cable modem. It's very flaky. The ISP is horrible. Uh, it, it's going down all the time. You're in the process of fixing it. You got a new ISP coming, but you know what? It's just, uh, being a pain right now. So you could, you could set this delay. Um, there's some other reasons too, like, and especially when you get more into like uh, port bandwidth utilization. In fact, let's look here under collection of ports. Here's port utilization over threshold. And let's add this instead so this is basically saying if the port it's going to go through all the devices if any of the devices ports it's going to look at every single port on every single device if any of those ports are 80 per, greater than 80 percent utilization then send an alert on it uh so in that case you know you might have a a uh, port that's right on the edge there you know it might pull one minute and pull pull at one five minute interval and be over 80 and then the next be under and then the next be over and the next be under and you can see if that happened it would be constantly alerting clearing alerting clearing and you would just be getting hammered with alerts so that's why you'd want to set this delay you know maybe i only care if it's going to be 80 percent for like an hour 60 minutes uh or i think you could even do one hour in here one h uh, as you can see down here in the little tool text so after that one hour hits, it's going to send out an alert. And it's going to send out as many alerts that are in here, this max alerts. If there's one, it's going to send out one alert, and none of these values if you mean anything. None of this actually means anything after that. Uh, I mean, it, it's going to send it to a transport, um, but it's never going to alert again. Uh, if I set this to two, it's going to send out, it's going to count down that one hour interval, and then it's going to send the alert. 
and then it's going to start counting down this interval over here and this is basically just the interval between alerts um, you've waited to your initial time but now you're like okay well over 80 percent for an hour that's pretty bad let me tell the knock to like get on this and figure out who's hogging up all the bandwidth so let me uh put this to like i don't know 30 minutes so now after that first hour it'll alert them and then every 30 minutes it'll alert them but it's only going to alert them twice so it's going to alert them at an hour and then at the 30 minute mark and then it'll never alert them again um, so if you wanted to keep on alerting meaning it never stops you could do negative one uh, that'll just keep it going forever or you could set it to some high number you know 200 I, I, there's, you could just play around with that at that point so um, if we put it to one here, uh, this mute alerts is basically just uh, if you want to just turn off this alert. You want to you did all this work, you found a good alert rule, everything's working great. You just don't want to alert on this rule right now. Um, you could just mute it, so it'll just save in here, but it'll never alert on it. Invert rule match. I've never had to use this, um, and this is basically trying to figure out if the opposite is true of this. So if any port is under 80% utilization, uh, and the port is down, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, it, you basically have to get the opposite of whatever this is. So this might alert on all the ports uh, if they were down. I, I, that doesn't even make any sense though. But I've never really used this because you know if you, if you did want to alert on like maybe every 80%. You know, every port that's 80% or under, you could just do, uh, instead of greater than, just do less than or equal to 80%. And that will alert on all your ports below 80% utilization, which would probably be all of them. So, recovery alerts is uh, the, when you, when this condition is finally false again, uh, so you it keep on running the polar script it's always happening it's always alerting and eventually sometimes it's going to go below 80 percent utilization so now the alert is done it's cleared uh it'll actually send out a recovery for you a recovery uh to the transport of your choosing so if it was an email it would send out a recovery email to you saying hey this alert's done it's up you can actually and then those those recovery emails are pretty nice because you'll see an alert templates we can actually say like how long this alert had been going on for so i'll get alerts in my email uh, about a device up and i'm like man that was down for six hours and 52 minutes and 30 seconds wow uh, that's pretty bad so um those are kind of helpful for uh, knowing when an alert over and just for the simple fact that you know how long it happened for because uh, you know you'd have to go in here and kind of look around and see uh, kind of compare the timestamps if you didn't have that so I guess I will now I guess the the, the device groups here is the last little part um, if you just want to filter on a certain device so we free this device up down but I don't care if the internet devices are burned down. I only care if it's my home com room location. All the devices in my home com room location. So you're kind of uh, instead of like you know when I I always say up here that you're filtering on all the devices. You're looking at all the devices, which ones are down. Uh, but in this case, you're only looking at the devices in my home com room. You know, so uh, you can create this. This gets more into maybe there's a certain group at a certain location that takes care of this, and only they need to worry about it. So you could just set their location and set them as the transport to notify them uh, and that would send them off okay I think that pretty much does it for alert rules